Kanye West album covers, Kid Cudi's chains, Drake's hoodies, and an Art Basel art piece with Pharrell. Takashi Murakami's beaming multicolored flowers are everywhere. And that's just a few. Since the first Murakami Flowers artworks debuted in 1995, the flowers have steadily taken over fashion. Ben Baller jewelry, porter bags, and a Thorbian watch all sport the now iconic smiling flower. And the Takashi Murakami and Louis Vuitton collaboration, which drew heavily on the flowers, lasted almost two decades. More recently, a flowery Supreme and Takashi Murakami box logo raised over 1 million US dollars for COVID-19 relief. The flower is uh, very important in uh, Japanese traditional painting. That's why I made uh, my style of the flower stuff. Murakami flowers have surpassed the reach of fashion too. You can spot them in even the most far-flung environments. Artworks and sculptures at the Palace of Versailles in 2010, Google's homepage for the 2011 summer solstice, and at the Macy's Day Parade later that year when Murakami dressed full head-to-toe flower regalia. While prints of his flower paintings sell in the thousands and paintings can reach millions at auction, Murakami's flowers have well transcended the art world, steadily taking over each and every corner of pop culture. The flowers simultaneously embody mass consumption, luxury, pop art, even resilience in the face of destruction. This is how Murakami's flowers became one of the most desirable and popular symbols of the 21st century. Behind the Hype Murakami Flower uh, Why many celebrity, many high luxury brand want to use the flower thing? My answer is, I don't know. <laughs> Murakami joined with Louis Vuitton in 2003 for a partnership that went on to last 13 years, the longest in the brand's history. Murakami's flowers found a new canvas on women's shoes, silk scarves, and even the brand's sacred monogram bags. You might credit his extensive work with LV and his close relationship with then-creative director Marc Jacobs for bringing Murakami flowers to center stage and sparking the craze which continued to dominate the 2010s. Murakami has since caught the eyes of some of fashion's most exciting brands, all in search of his signature flowers. The artist poured his longtime love for Vans and once again his flowers into limited edition graphic tees and skate decks for the brand in 2015, as well as a spin on Vans classic slip-on. An artist collaboration between Murakami and Virgil Abloh in 2018 resulted in gallery shows including a range of paintings, sculptures, t-shirts, prints, and a Murakami leather tote bag screen printed with flowers and Abloh's signature script. <laughs> In 2019, his work with ReadyMade brought the flowers to shorts and cushions crafted with military wool textile. And earlier that year, Murakami also snagged a collaboration with MoMA in the form of plushed pillows. Murakami's flowers also have cosigns from some of music's biggest names. Beyond the now iconic visuals from Kanye West's 2007 album Graduation and the upcoming animated television show Kids See Ghosts with West and Kid Cudi, Murakami's flowers got prime placement in a collaboration with OVO in 2018, which blended the flower motif with the OVO owl. Murakami also released a merchandise collaboration with Billie Eilish for Uniqlo, incorporating the flowers and visuals from the 2019 music video for You Should See Me in a Crown, directed by Murakami. You should see me in the crown. In it, Eilish destroys the city as a humanoid spider, and the flowers are unfortunate casualties wilting as their smiles fade. The destruction of the flowers, especially when their grins turn to sadness, is actually quite shocking. On the surface, Takashi Murakami's use of the flowers, cartoonish eyeballs, bright colors, mushrooms, and childlike characters like the infamous Mr. Dobb make his work seem unconditionally happy and joyful. But there are deeper and darker undertones within these works. If you take a closer look at the flowers, for instance, there are hidden tears. When I get uh, this idea is uh, when I was moved to the New York City and I had a very strong homesick because I'm uh, very loneliness. The inspiration behind Murakami's flowers motif came from his studies of Nahonga, or traditional Japanese style painting. One of the subjects in Nahonga is Setsugetsuka, which translates to snow moon flowers. Murakami attempted to paint flowers in his tradition, but he instead painted 50 flowers, each on a stem with two to three leaves and the Murakami flower was born. As to the flower's smiles, Murakami himself explained that the collective trauma of the bombings created layers of repressed and at times contradictory emotions. On one hand, a sense of powerlessness played out in cute, kawaii characters like Mr. Dobb, 
and on the other, a fascination with power and destruction, explored in the mushrooms and skulls, which often appear alongside the flowers in Murakami's works. The violence of the Billie Eilish video, especially the decimation of the flowers, doesn't seem so far off now. Murakami is known to blend influences from Andy Warhol and otaku culture, a Japanese term for young outsiders obsessed with computers, nuclear catastrophe, and sci-fi anime to the detriment of their social skills. He blurs the lines between Japanese subculture, Western art practices, and the complicated history between them to create deeply covetable and contradictory pop art, perhaps best exemplified by the Murakami flowers. And as much as Murakami has taken over pop culture at large, his foothold in the art world remains stronger than ever. In 2019, a massive exhibition in Hong Kong titled Murakami vs. Murakami filled an entire room with huge flower sculptures and flower works on the walls, ceilings, and floors. Murakami has also used the runway success of the flowers to support various charitable causes, including a clothing capsule with Pangea in support of World Bee Day, and a print sale to benefit the Black Lives Matter movement has raised over 1.3 million US dollars. With the flowers, Murakami built a bridge between consumers in fine art, high fashion, and streetwear. The flowers became an important vehicle for Murakami's rise in the fashion industry, and in many ways sparked the now commonplace practice of collaborative collections between artists and fashion brands. His work with musical artists and landmark cultural institutions has brought his work to a broader audience. These much more public installations and artworks combined with his approach to merchandise, print sales, and auction paintings is uniquely democratic. By creating multiple entry points to owning and interacting with his work, he shows that the Murakami flowers are not just for the elusive few, but for the many. So how to make sense of the flowers' origins? Their cheery demeanor and aesthetic simply hides a far darker undercurrent of trauma and violence. But perhaps that paradox is by design. The flowers operate as sort of a Trojan horse. The now pervasive symbol has carried an important story to the mass market, the runway, and the art world to claim. The lesson is, even the cutest, blossoming packages might be more complicated than meets the eye. Behind the Hype, Murakami Flower.